for us, Ashley. I, I think a lot of women that date athletes or just high profile, profile men in general, you can lose yourself in them. <laughs> And so a lot of women come from this perspective where that was their whole life. And you know, their whole life was just waiting at home for their man to come home from practice. And maybe you're with the kids all day and then you wait for him and that can feel very lonely. One thing that I, uh, that I, that I think that my worldview can differ in some ways is that I always had my, my own life and my own career and things that I was doing. And so I think that that the, the worldview that I look at from the quote unquote WAG perspective could be a little bit different. That's one thing that I really like about, you know, the things that you talk to women about is not losing yourself. Yes. Because I, I think what I happens you. is that you're dating these high profile men, these men with power, everybody knows them. They, they've got the fame, they've got the celebrity, they've got the money, like all of that. You can lose yourself in that, but it's so important as a woman to not do that. Do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, I wish I would have had you, Crystal, because I would have benefited. But so, even, Crystal, before you talk about how to, how to stop them, on what would you say your perspective on life and how you saw yourself was when you were in your relationship? And then I never wanted to feel like I was not there for him and I was abandoning him. Because and we don't like to also speak about it, guys, but also the fear that if you weren't at home and you weren't doing the right things, that he could go Somebody and find it somewhere else. else. Yeah. yeah. And I'm gonna interject yeah. myself because that's I think one of our biggest myths is that if we do all the things for our man, mm -hmm. then he's gonna have the place to come home mm -hmm. to. And it's actually like men are really attracted to women who have boundaries and who know themselves mm -hmm. and love themselves. And so it's like when we're waiting beck and call we're actually hurting ourselves yeah. we're actually just yeah. being the one at home that they could just be like okay but um and that's why they go out and then they're attracted to these strong women who have their sex yeah. appeal and their confidence and their they know what they want yeah. and, blah, 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 and they can because we don't have that we're just like okay what do you and like when you said waiting at home it's like when i think back to my life today versus how it was when we were in the league that was me it was like where should i shop today what should I do until he gets home? Yeah. And then, like, you, like, wait to yeah. breathe until they that get home. That just gave me the chills. Yeah, yeah because no, two, two, that, that real knowing, thing. Yo, and also wanting to, like, have lunch on the table when he gets yes. home. Yeah. Do those things. And it was just, like, until, like, 1 o'clock. Like, I can't wait until 1 o'clock. Yeah. Because when he comes home. But then imagine, sis, you did all this, and he don't come home until 4. Exactly. Yeah. And you're waiting now. You've been waiting all day till one, and then at one o'clock he doesn't come. Now you're waiting till four, and you don't want to bother him. Mm -hmm. Maybe what is he doing? And then you're on Instagram, or you're doing whatever you can to try to figure out what he's doing, and it's oh, just thank God I didn't have not a oh, oh, I would have made it. Oh, say. What? It's like um, just not. It the puts unnecessary it. pressures on a relationship because uh, it's, it's fucked yeah. up perspective. To yeah. all of women that really admire that lifestyle, I understand the admiration of the lifestyle, but mm -hmm. only if you're strong, strong. enough. Mm -hmm to know that you cannot get lost in everything that you see that looks glitz and glammy and, and all of that. Mine was different in the sense of I just wanted to see him win. Like, mm -hmm. I love that man so much where I just wanted, cause like, cause I knew his, I watched film, like I'm a tomboy, like I get yeah. too early, but like, yeah. I could be an agent, like that's how deep I am in it. But like, why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> That's what broke my heart through everything because I look back at it and I wanted to be that perfect person. I was the assistant, I iron, I clean, I do everything. I, call, I color print, organize, did it. Everything to a T. But it didn't do anything for him because he still didn't value me. Mm -hmm. It was him and it just breaks my heart so to this day because the more that you're out of it, you start seeing more of who this person was that you were with. And it was like, it didn't matter all the things you were saying you were doing for somebody. See, they're going to be good enough or you're not. It's so, and what's coming? Go ahead. No, I, I think that you hit something on the head, Autumn, that was dead on that I think all of us can relate to. When you love someone and you care about someone mm -hmm. so much, you just want to see them win. win. Yo, and the mm -hmm. other thing is, that, like, I always got these stigmas about, like, oh, why do you have to date athletes or why do you do this? And I say, you know what? You have no idea what it is to watch a man wake up every day at 545 in the morning to not be fucking late. late. To, to, to get their body that week in and week out and it's just something that is so like physically and emotional come on it's admirable mm -hmm. and you are proud to stand and by his look side like a Greek god with the body and hello by the way the man that's, is nice to look at the side cuffs in the ass uh, it's 
I guess. <laughs> but it's also, though, it makes you fucking feel good to be the one that is making sure that when he comes home yeah. that you are actually enabling him to be the best version of himself. And sometimes as a woman, at the, in those moments, that's enough. That is mm-hmm. right. And as much as we want to love and we want to support them, without that internal coaching, that internal training to make us better women, we actually are not even supporting them the way they deserve. Exactly. And that's crazy. what I was thinking as you're, as you're saying the winning, like we just want our men to win. I, I think of this, you know, athletes are competitors and so and society teaches you to compete and mm-hmm. someone has to lose. But universal law is everyone can win abundance yeah, mm-hmm. and so it's like you have to look at like yes he's winning you're supporting him win but you guys are not winning Wait. as a unit if you're oh, losing, losing. Ooh, that's and good snaps, you. Bitch. Snaps. Yeah. Yeah. but when a pastor just preached no possession no position and no um i forget what it was but it was another p another p but like no it was based no person no possession and no position should oh, be wow. bigger than god and so what i'm getting at and what god mm-hmm. is downloading in me is that we get so wrapped up and i need to have a perfect marriage i need to be the perfect wife i need to be the best mom i'm going to compare myself oh i don't do pinterest i don't like i gave that shit up a long time ago i don't bring all the halloween treats on halloween that's not my calling yeah okay enjoy that's my calling i'll do it that's my calling i wish i was next to you how about you did you like i I finally (laughs) surrendered and this is what i'm trying to teach women is like let's let everyone be great in their way yeah like i have a best friend who is like you i'm like Girl, when you get your teacher, parent, teacher gifts, just buy mine and tell yeah. me how much I owe you. Yeah. Buy my mom that for gifts. But I yeah, used to beat actually... myself up, yeah. and it's like you have to surrender. So I'll close my point on that. My point is with these men, I I believe this is another reason why I'm targeting athletes' wives because we are in relationship with broken men. Mm. We are in relationship with men who stepped into money, influence, and power, Mm -hmm. but came from families that don't know how to love, disrespect, they don't know abundance. And so we are the chosen ones, if we choose it, we are in a, a battle, a spiritual battle. Uh, spiritual where battle. If, if you can, like to your point, if you can't hold on to the pinky toe, says don't ride or die. Don't, don't die for the relationship. Don't die but, for the relationship. but I will say that we, when we step into this world of athletes and mm-hmm. high profile men, you're stepping up to be the mirror to a man and and helping him heal his wounds. And our men have lots of wounds, and black athlete men especially. Yeah. So. It's like yeah. I'm almost like, okay, God, are you like, are you saying we have to endure some of this stuff to love them anyways and to be unconditional? It's the unconditional, the unconditional love unconditional. for me because I think so much of their. I don't know why I feel like I'm gonna cry. Because it's real. Because it's, it's real. real. Yeah. Because yeah. so this is our life. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, <laughs> but I'm also too. Right no. <laughs> we can't all cry, you guys. We're all gonna be so crying. Just everything that they. All the fame and the money, it's so conditional. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I feel like a lot of the time as women were put in their life to show them unconditional love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I really hold on to that because obviously me and Deshaun, you know, we're not even married. And a lot of people will look at me and be like, why are you staying with him? He doesn't even want to marry you. It's more than that it's for me. More, yeah. I've been put in his life to show him unconditional love mm-hmm. and I'll love him you know regardless mm. i don't have to be mm. married to him to love him unconditionally and to show him what that looks like because you know a lot of people will never get that in their whole right. life right it's yeah. also it's it's mm. absolutely one of the things that i admire most about ashley is her ability mm. to understand that her purpose and her her purpose and reason for being some uh, being a part of her relationship is far bigger than her mm-hmm. but i would argue autumn and i want to move the conversation to us yeah is that I remember feeling just like that and now outside of my relationship mm-hmm. and you I don't know if people know that you're you're divorced now or something well, I just filed for divorce yeah and you just time. filed for divorce right is let's talk about maybe that shift yeah from understanding yeah. that maybe I'm here for someone else yeah. additionally to understanding that maybe I'm actually here for me mm-hmm. and there is no actually no right or wrong answer no, no, when no, I no. ask this question I just am curious on the perspective shift yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, because I think that I I had Ashley's perspective for a long time. I had that for a bit until long. mine was conditional, and I was unconditionally going to be there. But guess who wasn't? He wasn't, and he decided to remove himself. And all of that unconditional love that I had fought for for so long now meant nothing. Mm. I could have stayed there until I was blue in the face, broken, beaten, and battered. But God said, 
actually that's not for you mm -hmm. sis Definitely. Mm -hmm. talk to me about maybe your transition and how you feel like a shift Gosh, and to even be strong enough to, <laughs> to even be strong enough to file for divorce yeah. after yeah. everything it takes the same strength it, it takes the same is. strength definitely to know when to walk away yeah. by far the hardest decision especially my parents been married for 47 years mm -hmm. Oof. Um, when I met him at 19, I just wanted to grow. Me, I know my selflessness and the love that I have and the downness I have that I said that this isn't for me. Do you want? Because all I wanted to do and how I always wanted to do for him was to help him. But I can't help him if he don't want to help himself. And then on top of being you, yeah. yeah. And that's what my girlfriend said. My best yeah. friend was like, Autumn, what the fuck? What about Autumn? And I was like, it's so crazy. But I was like, yeah, what about me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, what about me? So yeah. so that was my deciding factor to that. Oh, it was the hardest thing, but I had enough courage because of that conversation I had with my dad. So I'm grateful for the relationship that your husband and Deshaun is having with the girls that they can be open enough yeah. to talk. Because if I didn't talk to my dad, I probably wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. It's mm. so crazy you say that because I always reference a conversation I had with my dad too. We were having a going through a tough time, and I was just so upset. And I'm like, you know, those moments where you know, it's a week, you ain't slept, you ain't ate, yeah. you know, like you yeah. do, your parents Stress. see yeah. it all over your yeah. face. And my dad said, "When do you want to get off the roller coaster?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, "Huh?" And he said, "You know what this ride is. You've been on the ride. You're on. You're on loop number seven. You're gonna go upside down. Your stomach's gonna drop." And all of this is on his terms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can decide whether or not you want to stay on this roller coaster or not. If mm -hmm. you like the ride, mm -hmm. stay. But if your stomach can't handle it, get off, off the ride. Such a good word. You yeah. have to. But anyway, but I wanted that relationship and that connection. So I really ultimately I'm just not, I'm, I'm tired of pretending to be okay too. Mm -hmm. And I'm not okay, yeah. Yeah. especially with the Instagram. And then I had that pressure, one, that people thought that I wasn't with him because he didn't make it. Mm -hmm. That was oh my, my number one. Because no, that them don't make it. Right, yeah. but, but I think, yeah. I think yeah. I say that to our standpoint, Chris, because like you said, in our world, like But that's my how people wanna look, are, oh yeah, oh okay, she was just here for the ride, yeah. now he's done, she's because done. My girlfriend, my girlfriend said, you have to stop worrying about what other people think and you have to do what's okay for you. And then hopefully they'll understand And if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. You know what it is. Yeah. And I think, yeah. you know, and so. I think what you're saying is so powerful because going back to like the, we're on this bridge of like, do you stay or do you go? Yeah. When does, when is the line no, drawn? When is and that's such a big question. And I think that what I was getting at too with saying like, we come in by ourselves and we leave by ourselves is that our path here is with us and God. So mm -hmm. that gave me chills that you were praying and giving it to God because I think that's where people lose themselves. It's like they're looking to their friends or to society or to Instagram, what should I hold yeah. up? When you just be in your truth, God will give you the truth. God, you and God are the truth. And yeah. so that's when you're, it's like we know in our heart of hearts. And so I always tell people, I've seen some shit. I've gone through shit. My husband is not perfect, but I stayed because I, my God never, me and God never had a heart to heart that it's time for me to go. go right. He's not spitting on me. He's not hitting me. He's not blatantly just cheating, but he's made mistakes. He's a black man. He's a, he objectifies women. He talks about girls with his friends. He does stupid shit, but like, can I be with him? Can I accept that? So I think the question we have to ask is, am I available for, for the activities that are happening to me? Can I stay for this? Is my safety, are my kids safe? Mm -hmm. you know? it's, it's, it's so interesting, and, and we can move on from this point, but I just, in those conversations with God, mm -hmm. right, that you have mm -hmm. in the middle of your relationships at some time, when, particularly in hard points, I remember going to bed one night just praying so hard, knowing that I felt like, I don't know, he probably didn't come home. It was probably 4 o'clock in the morning. He hadn't been home yet. I knew everything was closed. What the fuck are you doing? You know what he's doing. And just praying and crying and praying and crying, and I fell asleep. And in my dream, my aunt, who had passed, picked me up from the bed, carried me down the stairs, and walked smooth out the house. Mm -hmm. And I remember waking up that next morning oh, and knowing too. That I was in the wrong place. place. I mm. knew it. Mm. Now I did mm. not know how to 
how to get rid of that feeling like I, I, I'm supposed to be here and God wants me here and he doesn't have anybody else and I'm supposed yeah. to be the reason. I'm going to teach him how to love. I'm going to teach him how to stay. He's walked out on other people in his life and I'm going to be that example. But the moment that I could, that God could not even tell me anymore that this is where I believe belongs was the moment that I was like, I got to go. I wasn't strong enough at that moment to go. Right. So guess what happened? God removed him. Yeah. Yeah. The way. He said, oh, you can't do it. I'm going I'm 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 to do it. I'm going to have him do it for yeah. you. Yeah. And it happened to me in the nastiest, hardest, Ooh. most humiliating Ooh. way it could have happened to me. But God said, I've been telling you. Mm-hmm. I've been telling and you. Your lesson. I've been there's showing your lesson. you. I've been doing all of this, and you have not yet decided to hear me, but you see me. Mm-hmm. Because you want your worldly wants mm-hmm. so much more than you want. And and I think that oftentimes a lot of women also try to act like, I love him so much, and it's not the life, and it's not this, and it's not that. But a lot of it is. A lot of it. Oh, a lot of it is. But it is. It's routine and comfortability. Yeah. Like, are you really going to sit there and change your lifestyle? But one of my girlfriends, who I'm so proud of, she gave me strength, too. Husband's crazy, like, y'all. <laughs> no, but good crazy, like, financial. Like, you would be like, oh, my gosh. You know, it takes a strong woman to walk away. She said, the lifestyle don't mean that much to me no more. I'm out. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, okay. You well, know, once you so get true. to that, I mean, because I mean, when, when you're living that lifestyle, but mm-hmm. you can honestly look and say that, that's when you, you know, you know. There's no looking back once there the woman's isn't. made her mind up. And since there ain't no looking back, and Autumn then filed for divorce. I know, I can't her way, sis. That. You I can enjoy your five, y'all. I'm, I'm grateful and happy. I'm terrified. Well, you can join me on the single <laughs> yeah, side, sis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no.